E3 is one of the most exciting times of the year for any gamer, but at the same time, I think we forget how uncomfortable and poorly executed it often is. Electronic Entertainment Expo, most commonly referred to as E3, or as I like to call it, that place where them video games get shown in it, is the annual trade fair where all the major players in the games industry set time aside to reveal an assortment of new software and hardware. It's effectively any game as middle of the year Christmas. The excitement is exaggerated. Paggle 2! <laughs> The arguments about who won that happen afterwards are vapid. Nearly always something goes wrong in a technical aspect. And it usually also ends up being pretty disappointing in one way or another. Fortunately, we have a product for people who aren't able to get some form of connectivity. It's called Xbox 360. Right. And that's because I think people forget that E3 is not necessarily for them. It is an industry-only event. You can't just walk in. And most of the announcements are intended to appease stockholders in big shops like Walmart and GameStop, who can sit back and say, Oh, thank God, there's a new Call of Duty out this year. That's a relief. And I do admit, I get just as excited as the next person. It's a merry old time for the most part. All it takes is for that one thing you wanted to be revealed and you'll be happy. But aside that, I think we've forgotten about everything else, because it's usually something that desperately needs to be forgotten. It's so fucking awkward. E3 is pretty infamous at this point for being a cringe fest of epic proportions. Four celebrity cameos, Wii music, <laughs> unintentional forced sex jokes, just let it happen, it'll be over soon, Wii music, Wonder Book. Anything with Connect, Wii Music. I could go on for about six years listing all the uncomfortable moments. It's actually kind of funny to see a bunch of people so far removed from real life, so desperately floundering to appear as hip and relevant. I wonder how this might have looked 20 years ago. That every single person who presents on stage comes across like some kind of weird alien. I'm sure it's pretty stressful to try and remember all those lines, especially really complex ones like... So here's this giant enemy crab, and you attack its weak point for massive damage. <clears throat> I mean, what would you do if your demo of Assassin's Creed totally froze and made your game look like a piece of shit? I would have my eyes firmly planted on the floor as well, I can tell you that. But what about if your demo doesn't even start, so you just have to stand there in front of millions of people, all the practice, test runs, memorizing, all for nothing. I still find it kind of baffling that these companies need to put together these highly choreographed shows with millions of dollars of planning and time sunk into them, when they could just produce an hour-long video before the fact and stream it on the internet and Instead. That way, instead of having an error rate of 100%, you can have an error rate of zero. You wouldn't need to worry about stumbling over lines or wanting to die after doing something like this. Oh, I can wall jump. Yes, I can, guys, I can. <laughs> Ooh. Keep Go attention on, going, it. guys, keep attention. <laughs> Oh, it's pretty ironic that the only company to already be doing this is Nintendo, who are still seemingly trapped in 2003 for the most part. And even then, they still managed to make it stilted and awkward. Shall we go to the Pikmin area? I mean, really, why do they even use this guy? He's about as charismatic as a plank of wood with a wig and glasses on. He even stands like he's being controlled by some kind of puppet master. Why do we watch this again? As much as I enjoy being bombarded with countless adverts for a product... Wait, no, I don't enjoy that. So what makes E3 so different? Well, nothing really. It is like watching an hour and a half long advert break, but with a bunch of dudes with rods up their asses awkwardly introducing each segment. We get so wrapped up in the hype and hope for greatness that I guess we forget about it. Okay, I guess it's slightly better than watching an hour of cereal adverts or whatever. They're gonna taste great. They're gonna taste great. 
I can hear the sound of Frosties hitting me plays. But even so, I mentioned this briefly in the movie trailers video, but why does every single game ever need to be revealed with a fully rendered CG trailer that approximately resembles about 3% of what the actual game is going to be like? I used to like it when I was younger and stupider. Then I realized, wait, this couldn't be more of a waste of time. Do they just do this because everyone else does it? Is it because they can't show footage because the game isn't ready and they have nothing else? Yes. Yes, it is. I don't want to hear another sad version of a classic song for a game trailer. It's really, really stupid and annoying. Fallout 4's reveal didn't do these things, so why is everyone else still doing it? Have we not learned that being lied to is not enjoyable? Oh yeah, that reminds me. False promises. And lies. In a world where it's seemingly too much to ask for a game to work on day one, I guess it's suitably fitting that many E3 demos also have the knack of being deceitful and tricksy. Whether it was Colonial Marines, Watch Dogs, or The Witcher, all coming across slightly differently in their demos to the final product, it's increasingly seeming to be becoming more and more of a problem, as games become more expensive to make, take longer to develop, and just with how the game development cycle works, I guess it's to be expected at this point. But the main reason this happens is because the gameplay you see at these trade shows are usually presented from what are called a vertical slice, a custom-built, heavily guided and choreographed chunk of a game that is supposed to resemble what the final product is going to play and look like. I don't know why we just don't wait and show things when they're ready to be shown, but I guess these games do have to come out at some point, but I don't think it's necessarily unfair to expect at least some kind of visual parody with how the company itself presents their own game for the first time. But what are you gonna do? Complain about it on the internet? Oh. Oh well, whatever. With all that said and done, I guess the jankiness and clusterfuck that is E3 is part of the weird backwards charm it has. And ultimately, it's not really about the trailers or the business speak. It's about the games. And as long as... Oh my god, stop. What is it? Just, just no. Please stop. I take it back. This is the worst. No, this is the real worst. No, I I've had enough of one the book now. Stop. No! No! So those are my thoughts on E3. Let's hope we have a good one this year. So what do you think? What are your favorite and least favorite parts of the event? Did you like or dislike the video? Tell me in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. All comments and ratings are very much appreciated. Make sure you check out my other videos and other channel, Jar Media, for more E3 opinions and things. I'll see you next time. Bye.